become a reality, by the way, it has been organized. All the events, all the preparations for it go in the direction of uh, environmental uh, friendly preparations in order to convince the leaders of the world to go into caring for creation and uh, for, for, for God's creation, for, for the whole world. Yes, it is uh, part, is one of the main plenaries of that day. For some churches, 1st of September is also the beginning of a church calendar. So the emphasis on creation will be very much highlighted in that first plenary. First, is a theological issue. Because when we see the love of Christ moves the world to reconciliation and unity. In that uh, word, world, creation is included. God's plan in Christ was also reconciliation and healing of the whole creation. And this will be very much reflected in the assembly. Two great leaders, uh, Christian leaders in the world, namely uh, His Holiness uh, Patriarch Bartolomeo and His Holiness uh, Pope Francis uh, will have addresses on that, marking the importance of creation for our discussions in Karlsruhe on the theme that we are having. I wouldn't say so. The issue of uh, climate change, the issue of uh, environment, is part of the very Christian identity. In Christ, God took flesh, and flesh is made up of elements of creation. So care for creation is a matter of spirituality. It's of deep theology. Concretely, then, care for creation has been expressed in WCC during time. It's not today only. As for today, I would say uh, before 1992, when we have the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, the World Council of Churches has been involved long before in dealing with uh, care for creation. Secondly, in 1974, I would mention, the WCC organized a big event uh, on integrity of creation, which launched somehow the interest again on taking care for God's creation. To go closer to our time, in 2015, when we had the COP21 in Paris, many people from many parts of the world had the pilgrimage to Paris, but I would say the Germans themselves and many who traveled from Germany to Paris to show their support for the care for creation, which was discussed in COP21 in Paris. And I think for me, this means a lot. WCC deals with creation not as a fashionable issue of our time, but as a basic element of its very identity. Well, the Germans, I think, uh, over the years, have been the ones showing a lot of care for creation. Not only the event of 2015, when you had these people uh, in pilgrimage to Paris. But I'll go even longer before that. In 1970s, we had a big ecological movement which started in uh, East Germany. And this was very much linked to beginning of thinking on ecology in the all kinds of churches. And from that time on, awareness on uh, care for creation is very high in Germany. If I come to our time, I was impressed, I think, last week, uh, the German foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, made a statement uh, which went into my heart. And she said the ecological crisis is one of the biggest challenges facing the humanity of our time. This is a strong statement. And I think we go in the same direction. Just to comment on that, uh, as representing WCC, I participated in preparations for COP26 in Rome with many other religious leaders. We had to make a common statement. What do we say 
about our common house, which is the earth. And the conclusion was, if we don't change our behavior, in 50 years, our planet will be uninhabitable. Our children cannot live on earth anymore. So the, the request was, we must act now. We talked a lot, but we must act now. And I think the assembly will be another event when our leaders will be asked to act now to care for our common planet, the Earth. It was a moving uh, trip. We had to go by car, 1,700 kilometers, because there are no flights to Ukraine. And we met people in the parishes, people caring for refugees and for people who are victims of the war, and also the church leaders. And I was moved to see how much they appreciate all kinds of churches, our statements, our letters, and our visit in the midst of this insecurity. Said you are the first ones of these high level religious leaders who come to visit us, showed appreciation. The second thing, we went there with a mandate from our governing bodies to ensure that we have Ukrainian participation in Germany to give the floor to Ukrainians to speak about themselves. Because until now, we spoke about Ukrainians, but ha without having Ukrainians. And I can share with you that I was, uh, I'm happy to, to report that uh, each church gave us delegates, and now we have uh, a number of 11 participants from Ukraine, from all churches, including National Council of Churches, uh, who will come to Ukraine. And you'll be given the floor to share about the realities, and the challenges, and the way to the future. Well, this was one of the challenges. Uh, we were asked even in Ukraine and uh, some other churches said, how can we keep the Russian Orthodox Church as a member? We discussed it in depth during the last Central Committee, what to do about it, since some churches asked to exclude the Russian Orthodox Church from the World Council of Churches. We had a big debate and we went back in the history of the ecumenical of the World Council of Churches. The conclusion is that the World Council of Churches is a wide platform, open platform, where we invite people to come to discuss with one another, not because they agree with one another, but because they disagree. So it has been created after the Second World War to bring people from different camps with different ideological perspectives to come together to challenge one another and to find ways of cohabitation to advance to the future. And they said, we should keep the identity of the World Council of Churches. We should keep the Russian Orthodox Church as part of the fellowship and continue the dialogue with them. However, saying that does not mean that we agree with the war, which was uh, uh, started in, on the 24th of February on, on the invasion of Ukraine, uh, not respecting the territorial integrity, and WCC was very critical on that. And all our statements said and show what was the perspective of the World Council of Churches. So we are critical and challenging, but we keep them at the table to discuss with them and to challenge one another. As a wide and open platform, we expect to have all kinds of positions. So we'll have issues related to Israel and Palestine, I expect them, as we may have other issues being put on the table. But I'm not afraid the WCC is being instrumentalized or is not becoming a kind of a platform where certain groups are making propaganda in the WCC. We express opinions and then we debate with one another. Now to be more concrete, in preparation for the assembly, I also visited in July, Syria, from Damascus to Aleppo. We went by car and visited all the churches, Orthodox, Protestant, Armenian, all the others. And then we visited the churches in Lebanon. And after that, we went to Israel and Palestine. 
and met with all the patriarchs and the heads of churches and local communities with uh, Christian NGOs from uh, representing the, the basic communities in, in Palestine, and we listened to them. Now, what is the conclusion? The World Council of Churches does not take one side approach. To those who accuse WCC as being anti-Semitic, I would say and repeat again, since 1948, the WCC keeps telling that it recognizes the state of Israel within the perspective of international law, respects the right of Israel to defend itself and take care of its citizens. We are against any kind of violence or anti-Semitic expressions that happen here or there. And each time something happens, we are very vocal showing in our WCC website what happened to the people of Israel. At the same time, we are speaking about equal human rights for Palestinians. We ask that Palestinians are respected in their dignity and with their human rights. We ask for the end of occupation. We ask for equal treatment of all citizens. And each time something happens, a violation of human rights or an abuse on human rights to Palestinians, we are very vocal and strong in saying that, in challenging the state of Israel. We also keep repeating the proposal of two-state policy, which we are affirming. And we hope that one day these two people will come to cohabit together on the way to peace, reconciliation, to just peace, not just peace, not just peace without justice, but a just peace. Before I was put in this uh, job, huh, without uh, applying, people spoke that uh, there is a winter of ecumenism, or ecumenical winter. Nobody is interested in ecumenism anymore. What I experienced, it's a growing interest on ecumenical relationships. And I came to the conclusion that if WCC did not exist today, we have to invent it. Everywhere I traveled, from Middle East to Ukraine and other parts of the world, I was in touch with people, including evangelical Pentecostals. All of them, they see the, important, the importance of an international institution which brings Christians together to support one another on the basis of a common faith and especially to be able to respond together to the challenges we are faced with equally in our time. However, we may have to revisit our concept of unity, which is launched 70 years ago. All these theological debates and discussions. We may have to revisit that. I saw very much now people go into the direction of pilgrimage of walking together, despite of our theological differences, but walking together on the same values we promote in order to respond better to our challenges. So now to conclude, I hope that after Karlsruhe, we find a clearer and stronger way and our fellowship of churches will be strengthened because WCC is most needed today than any other time before.